Hello everybody, this is Tekka. There is a lot going on in the last week, and luckily we have the all new Tech Hut newsletter to tell us all about it. In this video, we're going to be covering the next major Nextcloud release, Hub 3, some awesome Pop OS Rust stuff, and much more. And of course, all this was sent out yesterday as a newsletter, so if you do want to get this, just go to the page down below, click the subscribe button right here, and you'll be good to go. So with that, something that has been uh, causing rather a stir or a buzz within our community is the fact that Fedora is going to be dropping GPU support for popular video codecs. At first, a lot of people thought that Fedora was going to be dropping H.264, 6.5, and VC1 codecs altogether, but that is not the case. It is only going to be GPU acceleration, which still kind of sucks. So you're not really going to have an issue necessarily playing these types of video files. It's strictly the GPU acceleration. In. So if you're trying to play 4K or 8K video, for example, you might notice some big performance hindrances. But as far as now and for most people, this shouldn't be that big of a deal. But it still kind of sucks that a big, massive corporation like Red Hat can't really figure out what they can and can't do when it comes to the legal standing on things like this. The acceleration codecs were added. They were now taken away. I think 36 and 37, there's not going to be the support for this anymore. And on here, if you want to learn more about that, there's going to be a link to an It's Foss article. Now, the, the big thing, the thing that I am the most excited for is Nextcloud Hub 3. When it comes to some of the personal features of Nextcloud, it is getting much closer to being a very viable alternative to something like a Google Photos, for example, or any other cloud photo provider. And probably one of the best tools when it comes to these services is face recognition. So you can see all the pictures or individual faces of every individual person that you've taken a picture of, click on their face and see all pictures of that specific person or pictures that they're in. That is now a feature within Nextcloud Hub and something that is greatly welcomed. And just overall, there's been improvements across the board in the overall design and appearance of everything. If we open this up, you can just kind of see everything's a bit more rounded, cleaner. They're following a lot of uh, really good um, UX design principles. If we scroll down, we have uh, more information on photos, including the updated gallery with the tile view so you can see everything. In a much more visually appealing way, we have that photo editor we talked about, that face recognition not only is a face recognition thing. It also is object recognition, which is nice. And if you're one of the people who uses Nextcloud for work, there's been a lot of improvements within Nextcloud Talk, including message expirations, uploading documents through the chat bar, creating polls, and a lot more. The mail application has been redesigned with mail content preview on the sidebar and a streamlined setup account wizard. Contacts has been reworked. We can see we have an actual organization chart that you could set up here, which is real nice if you're trying to find somebody within your company and talk to a specific person about a specific thing. There you go. And of course, there's been updates in performance and security. This whole page will be linked down below. So uh, check it out to read up uh, about more of the details. Next up, we have some Pop! OS type news. And first things first, they're going to be skipping the 21 or 22 Point 10 version. If you don't know, Pop! OS is currently based on Ubuntu, so they tend to follow the Ubuntu update cycle anywhere from a couple days to a couple months. In this case, there will not be a version for the point 10 release. And that is because the developers want to spend more time and effort working on their in-house desktop environment, Cosmic, Written, and Rust. And with that noted, we actually have a little preview here of what the uh, toolkit they're using. It is a, uh, the Rust Iced toolkit is going to be replacing GTK toolkit, which is what they're currently using. And I do got to say it is the perfect combination of like a flat theme without being too bland and washed out. It looks really good. And if we head over to Reddit, here this is where the main comment was made and where you can see a better image of the actual preview here this is the quote that is on the newsletter it is important to note that the demo application will showcase all the widget and theming capabilities in the cosmic design system and this is what they're going to be using to actually develop cosmic applications from and right here is just the con confirmation that they're going to be using iced instead of gtk and one of the main reasons they're doing this is iced have an api that's very 
flexible, expressive, and intuitive compared to GTK. And since they are developing this in Rust, it does make sense to use a Rust toolkit like this. So in the comments, let me know of what you think of the preview that they have spun up so far. Next up in this newsletter is just a featured video. You can hit the I above if you're interested in checking it out. This Edge 2 Pro, I covered a few videos back, super crazy powerful for a single board computer and crazy expensive for a single board computer. And last but not least, Twitter Bloom is going to start rolling out an edit button, finally. I do find it kind of unfortunate that this is gonna be a uh, Twitter Blue thing, so that basically means that you're gonna to have to pay for it. And as of now, people in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand are gonna be able to use this, and the feature will be coming to the United States very soon. If I go ahead and click on this tweet here, you can kind of see right here, it says last edited when the edit was, and then you can see a edit history. So it's gonna be kind of how Facebook works, where you can actually click on edited and see what they said before, so somebody can't get a bunch of replies and completely change what they said. I really do wish that this was a free feature, but I do understand people gotta be making money. Last but not least, I'll try to include something like this in all of these little newsletters. This is the GitHub repository. This is Motionity. This is a web-based motion graphics editor for everybody. And it's a self-proclaimed mixture of After Effects and Canva with features like keyframing, masking, uh, filters, and much more. And you could actually go ahead and try it right here. If you click on this, it will take you to the actual application. They have a guide, they have a get started, and this is what it looks like here. I haven't dived into it too much, but it really does seem cool. Let's add an emoji here. Not the best resolution of an emoji. A lot of typical transform tools you'd expect, position size, rotation, opacity, edit filters, crop image, a whole bunch of stuff. If we drop this down, we have the position, all that. I believe this is the keyframing down here. Overall, it seems like a super cool tool, especially for something that is just that accessible on the web. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was low key more of a, a promotional piece for uh, getting you to go click that little subscribe button in the corner of the newsletter. But even with that, if you do like me doing a news style type videos, please let me know down in the comments. Other than that, uh, Nick at the uh, Linux Experiment does much better news type videos than I do. So also check out his channel if you liked this. With all that, subscribe. I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.